Hey, I'm Brett, Useful Aircraft. We're back. 944, 86 degrees. I think summer's coming, uh, I don't know, slowly to a close maybe. It's a little bit more bearable. Got to rebuild an airplane today, uh, one that I've been working on for a while. Uh, it's the Bush plane. Um, dude, I've been having a lot of fun with this airplane. It's the first airplane um, that I've had that I've created successful gear for. Um, it's first airplane in a long time that I've put a rudder onto. It's um, still in desperate need of probably a new tail, tail slide, tail skid, tail skid. There we go. Simple airplane. It's, um, you know, a pair of ailerons. You got conventional elevator. You got a rudder. It's uh, very steerable on the ground. Um, 2205, 2300 kV motor, 654 prop, I believe. Um, it's a 3D printed landing gear of my own design. I was pretty happy. I was having significant problems getting these wheels to track. They are intentionally towed in. Um, in the, the gear system, when it's in flight, it appears that they're pointing in. So that way, when it's on the ground and under load, they bend out and track straight. Um, what I came up with was a series of 3D printed parts. You can see this is a uh, basically a locking. I'll get you in on that. This is a uh, an outer wheel lock. Inside I have a washer, the wheel itself, and yeah, it's loose on the shaft there, but so be it. On the other side of the gear, I also have another one of my wheel locks. I'm just using my, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, it's I think a two and a half millimeter survey stake flag and bending it on either side. And uh, that's been working really well. They, um, it tracks, it taxis, um, it, uh, it does all the things you want to do. The only reason I'm rebuilding this one, uh, I was flying at the park the other day and letting the dog chase it, and eventually uh, he managed to uh, to get to me. It'll still fly like this. Probably won't do inverted, but remember, uh, you know, straight and level. Um, it's pulling up. So let's uh, go ahead and start harvesting some parts. Try and keep this in frame and uh, see what we can do. Starting off by pulling the uh, servo mounts. Taking off the uh, control rods on the ailerons. These are my new style flight control horns. Grab the uh, other one here. Same thing, save my screw. Pull this guy out. He is reluctant. Um, jump into the tail. Get into there. Let's uh, open up so we can get to both the uh, push rods. Pull what will first be the rudder. Grab that screw out. There we are. That's the rudder. Do the same for the elevator. Screws out, servo horn, control rod. There we go. Um, no avionics in the back end, so I can take that off. Let's uh, save the tail skid, because why not? I'm lazy. A little bit of rubbing alcohol in there, my isopropyl out of my squeeze bottle. That came out fairly clean. We're done with the uh, tail assembly. That'll go in the trash. Let's start harvesting out of here. Same thing, open up, get into those servos. A little bit of isopropyl. And they should pop right out, the hot glue. Peel that off just so when we reuse them here in a couple minutes, they're uh, ready to go. Get into this guy. There we are. You know, does it break your heart to tear them apart? Yeah, you bet. But at the same time, we'll have this airplane up and flying again in no time. Use a little hook to get this piece of hot glue that's stuck in there. There we go. That's out. 
those dental hooks are uh, handy things. Get in here, ESC, let's pull out the receiver. There's the receiver. Let's pull the uh, motor. I actually had this airplane ballasted. Uh, I'll show you in a second. That's the top cowl closeout. Motor and ESC, you can see I had, well, you can see there, I had three uh, nuts, that I, or two nuts rather, that I'd filled with um, hot glue, and uh, that helped to provide, uh, bring that CG forward. Um, I've been flying this with uh, a smaller battery. I've been flying it with that 3S850. It will take the, uh, the 4S lithium ion cells. You just, again, pay attention to center of gravity. So, I'm gonna try and reuse the gear. Let's give it a look-see for cracks. Take the fuselage off at this point. There we are. Be kind to of your servo wires. That's the fuselage. Little squirt of uh, isopropyl back here. Now those wires are gonna need to be cleaned up. Push that out. Yeah, that had more glue on it than I thought. That's gonna need some love. Let me put these in the trash. Pick up the uh, <clears throat> servos that I dropped. We don't need the top cowl close out. All righty. Let's look at what we have. Um, the gear system, I'm gonna wanna clean some of this stuff out, so let's get some isopropyl down in here. See if I can pull this hot glue out. It should probably come out fairly evenly. This might turn into a time lapse because some of this feels fairly content to stay. It's encapsulated. And if this gets to be too Problematic. I'll just reprint the gear, but I'm a fan of using what I can from previous builds. That's slowly coming out. There we go. Push that last piece out. There we are. Let's try the other side. I'm going to need to get some more isopropyl here in a minute. I can push this through two at a time this way. I uh, really glued this in, but I suppose that's the point. That's the idea behind these holes. Hot glue, let's face it, isn't the world's greatest bonding agent, but um, what it does do is it provides a, a fair bit of grip in the, um, as long as you give it enough surface area to kind of interact with. And that's the point of these holes, is that they keep the hot glue engaged in the 3D part, and then also in the, um, on the foam board itself. What you have to do is you have to be careful when you're putting the hot glue in. Um, the hot glue will be hot enough to soften the PLA, so, I will do a checkerboard pattern and sometimes skip even one or two spaces just so I don't build enough latent heat to malform the PLA while the hot glue is uh, cooling. So if you understand what I'm saying, I'm just saying put the glue on here, but put it in small amounts and then come back and squirt it through other holes later, but don't do it just in one you know, don't put three tablespoons of hot glue on here and then be surprised when the PLA gets fucked up. So, let's get these guys out. Uh, 
We're almost there. I think, I think that's it. All right, we got good gear recovery. So again, that's the landing gear. You can see there's just a bunch of holes and here it too. You can see the locking nut, the washer inside, the wheel, which I just bought off of wherever. Other side, you got a washer, 3D printed, and a locking nut. Um, and this piece, yeah, it can spin, it can do whatever. But uh, same thing on this side, works well. No reinforcement. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get the... Uh, <coughs> Clean these parts up. Same thing, get the hot glue out of there. There we are. Out of there, servo's good as new. Do the other one. This isopropyl, I tell you, it's, uh, it's wonderful for this hobby. Really makes it easy to clean up stuff that otherwise would be problematic. Um, one day I can look back and say, we all should have been wearing gloves. I don't know, for years I was a fueler on the airport and we all should have been wearing gloves. Okay, so we've got two aileron servos, elevator and a rudder servo. Put those down. We've got a motor. Let's see how this motor mount looks. These two tabs hang out the back. They uh, um, help to keep the uh, motor adhering to the foam board because again, this is a tractor configuration. It's not a pusher. It, it pulls this airplane through the air. So the challenge that you have, if you think about it, is this is always trying to pull out of the foam board. And so it doesn't matter if the glue is strong. If the glue is strong and the foam board is weak, that motor is coming off. You also see, let me get this last piece out. But here it is. This, uh, that motor mount is supremely reusable. Um, you'll notice those... Uh, screws in there, the motor mount, uh, is designed with those to be countersunk and in doing that they, um, just checking torque, yep they're holding torque, okay. Um, and in countersinking it allows you to use the manufacturer provided screws. I don't like having to source third party stuff. I used to do that, you know, too many runs to Granger and, I don't know, Fastenal. Um, However you say them, I'm not entirely sure. I just thought it was fast now, but whatever. Anyway, that's in. Um, so a little bit of hot glue on top of that to, uh, that's my poor man's Loctite. Not worried about the ESC. This is not a sub 250 build. That is a larger motor. This is designed for larger parts. Um, so it is a, uh, take you back. Let's clean our work surface off. Get a little, a little organized here. We're gonna use the gear later. All of this hot glue residue, get it out. There we go. Trash. Pull this. Grab one of my key cards. Just to make sure I get all the junk off that. There we go. Pass that back. That goes there. And let's pull some parts. All right, so what we have, this will be the, uh, the cowl top closeout. That's where you put the battery into. And actually, just to get it out of the way, let's put a little bit of glue here and build this part. Um, this will greatly reduce our parts count sitting on our counter. So a dab of hot glue at the end of each one of these slats. A dab there. Try not to get any on the hinge line. So the short little mushroom pieces like this, they go up here. Short little mushroom piece, it goes up there. The longer piece that overhangs, that looks like that, that goes here. The longer piece that overhangs goes here. Okay, when it's done, that's what it looks like. I am gonna put that out of the way and I discovered my cell phone is a perfect way to hold that in place. Okay, avionics rack, 
servo mounts. You can see where the wire pass through is at the leading edge of each one of those. So this is the front of the airplane, that's the back of the airplane. All right. Tail top piece, close out. That's the aft fuselage cover. We'll get to that. I got an extra one of these. Those are the uh, cowl close out. Let's get down to the wings. Here we go. And we're doing something new. A couple of new practices here. So I'll bring you in and let you see. You all remember the marks that I use. These marks here designate where popsicle sticks go. All right? Let's bring it around and let you see. There, pay attention. There we are. So we're going to put popsicle sticks right at the leading edges on this. The reason being this airplane takes a bit of a beating. So here's a handful of popsicle sticks. And let's go in between what look like these parentheses and lay a line of hot glue. I'll do one down here as well for these. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up folding this leading edge fold over that popsicle stick. Okay. Put that there. Put this guy here. His buddy back here. They can get a big weight. Put this guy here. Can you see all those? Let's check the camera. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. So we're going to let these guys become content with where they live in life. Anyway, um, the wing, I have now made a couple other changes. I'll show you my tool that I'm using. Um, I don't use it all the time, just sometimes, you know, but actually I, I think probably more often than not recently. These are fender washers, okay? Uh, the importance is not the diameter. The importance is the fact that they roll. This is a 3D printed mount. Um, these are just, you know, miscellaneous hardware I had laying around. That's why it's all mismatched and silly. Um, the net effect is this is about a uh, five millimeter uh, width. This is about, you know, probably, I don't know, millimeter and a half maybe. Um, and I can use this to create folds, bends, you know, whatever I want. So for example, these hinge lines here, you watch, I'll run over them. I'll start here, press it in. I'll do the same with this side. And I'm just running through that hinge line. Yeah, it's picking up all the stuff with the laser left inside there. That's fine. I'll pull that out, throw it in the trash can. Now let's move these pieces. And let's do the same to the leading edge fold line. Um, this just makes this fold that much easier. Okay, so let's some of that stuff out. Oh, it's a mess. Can you see all this? That's all the detritus left behind when the laser makes its hinge lines. Um, so we've depressed the foam there and there. Um, we're going to fold this, these leading edge segments. And again, I've cut them into segments. Um, so they're easier to fold. And we're going to fold them over these popsicle sticks, which is going to work to help to, uh, it's going to work to help strengthen the leading edge. All right. It's also going to provide a slightly different wing shape. So let's get some hot glue and we'll start down with this guy here. Not a sub-250 build, but also I don't spare the horses. Hot glue is cheap. It is my engineering fluid of choice. Fold that leading edge over. Let's get a couple of one, two, three blocks. You don't need to use one, two, three blocks. You can use anything you have on hand, or you can just hold the damn thing. I am just lazy, and I build quicker. So that's the primary reason that I do that. I want to make sure that that is uh, kind of leaning somewhat aft, so it's it's holding the back end of what will be the trailing edge of this KFM step in position. So let's go ahead and do this one now. Can you see? No, you can't. We're going to do it down here. Same thing, the folded segment is shorter. 
but we want to make sure that we get that good adhesion at the back. Just like that. Bueno, bueno. Perfection. All right, we'll do the same with these guys. This is probably good. Here comes the interior section. This dot is for center of gravity marking. These two are for my Nerf drop mechanisms. Um, the X's indicate if you're gonna fold this, where not to apply glue. It doesn't apply in 98% of the builds. So we'll flop that over, grab a few more weights, start dropping them. I will take some of my weights from this. And we'll do that. Move to the uh, one remaining section. Same thing, Nerf dart holes, center gravity holes. The don't glue here if you're folding it and shipping marks, which do not apply. So ignore those X's. They're just because I made dumb mistakes when I was packing these for me. Fold it over and Let's steal some from this side this time. There we go, move that like that, move that like that. It's kind of like playing leapfrog. And we'll let this entire wing cool down and that glue to become one with the airframe. Next, we're going to, uh, we're going to actually move into building the airframe, but let's give this a minute, do a little housekeeping. I think I can take my phone back. I'll put the camera up here so you can see. Move it out, move it up, there we are. So we have the forward hatch is complete and that's dried. We can put that off to the side and we'll get to it in a minute. This is appearing to be good. Pull these pieces off, make sure that that trailing edge stays down. Looks good. That'll work. All right. Um, the we'll do the flight control horns later. That's the upper surface of the wing. That's the lower surface of the wing. We're in good shape. I'm going to put this out of the way for now. Let's move into the fuselage. Here's the fuselage. A couple of fold lines here. Some folks will point out why aren't there fold lines here and here. It's because I allow this to uh, just to bend as opposed to have crisp fold lines. Um, Anyway, so we'll go ahead and uh, just break these folds like that. Break it like that. And this is where we're gonna put our avionics rack in next. And that's gonna live here. The taper of the avionics rack, you can see it's narrower at the back than it is the leading edge. That's because that's the shape of the airplane overall. I'll bring it down so you can get a better view. Drop you so you can watch. Now, I'm gonna uh, set this up with hot glue on the interior portions here and here, not on the tabs. And then we're gonna fold it and we're gonna build a jig using one, two, three blocks. So, hot glue here, hot glue here. Nice line. There. There, kosher, kosher. Flip, flip. Now, the front of this, grab a couple of these. There we go, put two on a side. I'll square it up. Now, let's have you watch from back here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, there you are. Now, I wanna get this fuselage. And I need to get this in the tabs like that, and I want it to pinch. You see how I've jigged it up like that? Now at the same time, if you look down here, I can put glue in that segment. Let's do it. A little bit more. Good healthy beads of glue. 
There we are. We got them. I'm going to fold these in, push them down, make sure those tabs are fully seated, put some weight here, and then let's set a jig so that glues just as such. Do you see that? Now let's have an overall look see. So that's at the trailing edge, or the, the tail of the airplane rather. Mid fuselage, maybe onyx rack, and yeah, we're sitting nose high right now. And that's fine. Looking into it, you can see the avionics rack. Probably squeeze that a bit more. There we are. That's better. Um, avionics rack is seated, and the nose is not done. We're just waiting on the tail to uh, set. So, while we do, what I'll do is I'll run an interior bead of hot glue along my avionics rack. Both sides. Perfect. We can start thinking about doing the uh, leading edge, but at the same time, what we can also do is let's put in some servos. No point waiting. Probably should have done the aftmost one first, but uh, this is fine. There we are. And typically my forward servo ends up being my elevator, aft servo ends up being my uh, rudder. Does it have to be that way? No. Um, my designs had elevator long before they had rudder. I don't know, I fly jets. Rudders are weird. Sort of black magic thing, you just don't know. I don't know, it, you know, honestly in an airplane, uh, we have Yaw dampers. Yaw dampers take care of turn coordination for you while you're flying. Um, and basically take the rudder out of the equation until you come into a crosswind. And then you got to be pretty good and have an idea what you're doing. And that's a lot of fun. That's honestly why I find crosswind landings to be some of the more enjoyable landings you get to do in an airplane. So that has our two servos in place. Easiest way to remember which one's which is the length of the remaining wire out here. Um, by now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check back with our tail. And I'm going to just do a tactile check. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to take the weight off there. The reason, we're going to spin this around and put that same weight, watch it from a wide angle. I'm going to put the weight up here. Let's pan you up so you can see a little. There you are. I'm going to put the weight up here. But when I do it, first a bead of hot glue. The interior of the nose. I'll show it to you. No, see, interior of the nose. And drop this down. Same thing, a couple of blocks. And we're going to allow the airplane to rotate. We're going to pinch our nose in just like that. Jig it. I'll slide these aft just a hair. And put some weight. I need a little bit more on the outside holding these in. With when you cut the fold lines on the, you know, a beam here basically, when you put those creases, what happens is it makes this corner easier to form. However, the downside of it is. Is that pinched all the way? No, we want it just a little more. There we go. Um, the downside of that is uh, that it's a place for stress cracks to form. When you have a hard landing, you know, that's where it screws up. So I'm making sure this is pinched all the way in and we have a nice square surface to put our uh, right here that everybody's touching in the corners. And that, so that's why we have some weight being held down. All right, I think you get the point. Um, we will then, this is the thing with this airplane, very quickly, um, <laughs> you run out of parts. Let's build the tail. The tail back here, some reference points. I'm just talking while I give this a second for it to uh, dry. If you look along back here, this cutout here and this cutout here, I'll bring the camera in a little bit more so you can see it. 
this is where the uh, popsicle stick that is that we glued on the underside of the uh, horizontal, that's where that's going to pass. And I just realized this cut does not include the uh, horizontal. Let me grab that part. Just a moment. I'll show you the magic of a laser. Remember those parts I forgot? Anyway, that's our uh, elevator and our rudder. Shut the laser off. Let's pull these things out. So tell me again why you don't want one of those for Christmas. All right, popsicle stick time. We're gonna need two of them. One for the rudder, one for the elevator. There we go. Drop this into place. Yeah, these parts got cut off because I made some revisions to them. And oftentimes when I do stuff like that, I'll break it out into a separate worksheet and then you forget. And that's where you end up here. Okay, so we're gonna let those uh, go ahead and solidify. I'll run my little stomper through the uh, hinge line here. Break that hinge, pull out all that stuff. Boy, the birds of the park are gonna be a little bummed out. That used to be their favorite thing for their nests. And so the rudder, I don't stress about as much um, in terms of breaking that hinge line. Um, you know, you can still just do it by hand. It works just fine. So may as well put a, uh, put a control horn in there. So again, these are my control horns. Like this, we're gonna pop that right in there, just like that, and hit that up with a line of hot glue. We'll squirt through the center hole and a line of hot glue at the tail. When it's done, it should look like that. Kosher. Leave this here for that to feel better about itself. That'll work. For the elevator, Let's go ahead and get to mounting that. We're gonna move back to our jig. I'll bring you closer and let you watch. So remember I told you these cutouts here, that's where this is gonna pass through. So let's go ahead and put some hot glue in there. Hot glue through here, not through our alignment pins, but then aft, cut out for the spar. And we'll do the same on both sides. We'll then take this and drop it into place. Those alignment holes should line right up. And I'll take one of my holy uh, one, two, three blocks and put it there and allow that to uh, firm up for a bit. And while I do that, you can watch the excitement as I turn off the chiller. That's the chiller for the laser. Drops the water temperature down. The laser itself are running a 100 watt system. Um, so yeah, it's actually got all the power of a 100 watt light bulb. However, it's uh, putting all the power of that laser into a very small spot and that's what manages to make the uh, cuts. If it does anything organic, it does not do metal. It's a CO2 laser. It's the wrong frequency for metal and whatnot. So control horns, let's do an elevator control horn. Same thing. Um, I wanna have the this tab facing out into the longer surface that will have no force applied otherwise. So I'll pop that through here. Just like that. Hot glue through the middle, through the front, and through the back. I'll try and pull this piece off that was trying to join the circus. I'm going to put a weight underneath just to support it. 
So I talked about latent heat. Um, you know, you gotta watch. You can see this control horn is a little bit less than solid. So we will extract some of that latent heat with a gentle cooling fan. Um, you know, that's the only downside with PLA. You just have to be careful how much uh, hot glue exposure you get. See, now that's getting firmer and firmer, and uh, soon it'll be right as rain and absolutely zero issues. So let's go ahead and build the rest of the tail surrounding it. In order to do that, you can see, and I'll show you here, if you look down, these are a series of holes that line up all the way through the bottom of the fuselage. Can you see back in there? Let's see, can you? Oh, gimbaline cameras, I don't know how you work. Um, but what's going to happen is this, the rudder's popsicle stick is going to go through this hole, and uh, that lines up at the bottom of the fuselage, and that becomes the tail skid of the airplane. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll put a little hot glue on the underside here. And here. A little on the sides of this guy. And holding the fixed portions, putting the popsicle stick in the uh, spot and standby. I almost built this incorrectly. To recover from this, I'll put my elevator top plate on. Elevator top plate. And now, the rudder through the hole, the alignment marks. Squeeze that into position. And there we go. The tail is done. We'll let that firm up. We should be in good shape. And then after that, we'll give this a minute or so. And we'll start putting some uh, control rods in. We may as well begin attaching the tail control surfaces. So the longest of which we have these two control rods. The longest of which goes back to the elevator. The elevator has firmed up. Sorry about that. Hang on, camera's in the way. There we go. And if you can see here, we'll just put the servo horn on the elevator neutral. Let's do the same now with the rudder. I don't know, where's a good place for you to see this from? So, just thinking in my head how this is going to go, same thing. Control horn down, this guy here. Rudder more or less centered, and there we are. When this next tail piece gets installed, for this I'm going to bring it around to the side. When we install this piece here, you'll see the control rods will pass through just like that, and you'll still be able to get access to those screws. Um, can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, just barely. All right, so anyway, this will glue in here. That'll go in position like that. But I don't put that on until we have basically finished the rest of the airframe. Um, no point restricting access while we're still working on things. Now, we're uh, at the point where we can install some wings. These guys are going to go up here. Um, 
We have got wire pass-throughs, which are these oval cutouts. I'll bring you around and give you a tour. <laughs> these are wire pass-throughs here for the servo lines. This recess is for the spar of the popsicle sticks going through our two alignment tabs. So um, that gives you an idea where the wing is going to sit. Let's go ahead and put that in. Have the wing ready. A little hot glue at the front, the front of the forward alignment tab. Between the two alignment tabs, between the two alignment tabs, and then aft. Hold the wing up to get an idea of how much glue you want and where. And then these just press in like so. And like so. Put a little weight and we'll hold this down just like that. Uh, where's one of my holy ones? Oh, he's back here. So put that in just like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these alignment holes here with a little bit of hot glue. Just it helps to uh, grab that upper surface. You'll see I could have made the alignment tabs longer. It was a question of fitment on the sheet. Why I chose not to, but in doing this, you solve the issue. Everybody's quite grippy. Make sure that's seated all the way at the leading edge. Yes, it is. Okay, that's gonna be good. Let's drop some servos into the wings. Um, I'll grab these. Same thing, you can see the cutout where the wire will pass out at the forward edge of the servo as installed in the wing. There's one and the other one on the other side. Just like that. And we'll put a little hot glue in order to hold these into place. Through the screw hole, and then I do a strap through the back. Through the screw hole, strap through the back. Same here. Need a little more hot glue. There we go. The servos are in the wing and uh, we're ready to run the wires in. But what I'm going to do is just give this just a moment or two just to make sure it's fully bonded and set. Um, what we could do is mount the motor in the meantime. The motor itself, I'll show you. Come around here. The motor, the wires are going to come through the top. Um, over the top, the reason I do that is so that they're not dragging on the ground before this airplane had landing gear. Now I could actually have them come through the bottom again. That's what this cutout is for. This is a wire pass through into the cowl. So, um, and actually that's an idea I may revisit. Maybe I will make the, uh, the motors come through the bottom again. I don't know, the motor wires. So we're gonna put a little hot glue in the recesses here, here, and here. And then, We'll press our motor assembly in, just like that. To keep this square and nice, I'll put this little weight right here. And I'll show you what I'm doing. So that's keeping the motor square and tight. These tabs here 
I'll point to them here and the opposite side down here. I'm going to drip hot glue on those. I'm going to drip it from the top. Let's see if I can do this and keep it in the picture. The reason being is that will hold... That'll drip down, if you can see. And if you can see, that'll drip down and help to hold that in place. It's just a, a secondary backup. I don't know. The quiet voice in my head is saying at some point we'll revisit this motor mount, and that's very impossible. Um, I've flown this thing stacks and stacks, and it's loads of fun, and it works great as is, so we'll see if we need to do that. All right. Let's take a look at the overview of where we're at. Um, we may as well put a receiver in while we're waiting. Got our little receiver here. Um, I'll bring you close so you can watch. So running a big fat old ESC. Um, so this is gonna go into channel one. Um, and it's providing power as well as signal. So there it goes. So there is no BEC in this case. I'm going to, uh, let's see. I need to get my ailerons in. I'm going to run this pass through. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come underneath and just, do you remember those ovals under the wings? I'm going to feed servo wires through them. So there is no magic to this. Here's one servo wire. I'll reach in and grab it. There it is. That's for this side. Let me see if I can... This is going to be fun. Feed that wire through. Here it is. Okay. All right, left side, number one. So that's gonna go into uh, the next channel slot, which is actually channel two. Right side is number two. Where do I get this number one, number two? Guys, that comes from full scale aviation. Um, so remember, signal wires in the lead, ground wires at the back, so that gives our two ailerons. Um, then I go T-A-E-R, and uh, E is elevator. Elevator will be, elevator is closer to me, so it'll have the longer servo lead. And dudes, if you get this wrong, you unplug and plug them back in different. And this should be rudder. This receiver may have a blowing channel. I remember something about that, but let's try this. Let me find a battery and a radio. Here we go, we got both. And uh, turn the radio on. Okay. The. Uh, We'll try hooking up this power and see. We're clear of the prop. The ailerons are moving. Elevator is moving. Rudder is moving. Not gonna do throttle, not suicidal. I'm gonna disconnect the battery. There we go. All right, I think we can pull these off. these weights away. We're closing things out at this point. Still got to put the gear on, but that won't be too hard. For now, I'll just toss this. I like to have my antenna at the back. I'm going to put a dab of hot glue in here. I don't know why they 
can't seem to bond these parts together, but... Oh, by the way, that's warm. Okay, so... Antenna going aft. There it goes. I will uh, push it back, push it back, push it back. There it goes. Put our ESC and whatnot in there. We can close out our fuselage with this piece. And this is just going to go underneath the motor or I'm yes, underneath the motor wires. And it goes right there. That'll just hold right there. That'll be perfect. Bueno, bueno. Keep that in for the sake of making everybody clean and nice. I'm breaking the leading edge, putting a dab of hot glue inside here, just because whatever angle this ends up setting at, it'll then find its happy place. I will then tuck that in like that, and that in like that. And like I said, this will end up gluing that angle and everybody will be happy. Okay, um, why don't we put in control horns on the wings? So I've got a set of control horns here. Break these off. Glue we'll through the middle of the control horn and the trailing edge. That'll hold. Do the same here. Let's see if I can set you up with an action shot. Glue through the middle of the control horn, there, trailing edge, leading edge. All right, and we'll leave that. Those guys will cure. Um, we may as well, well, let's watch this. This is gonna be exciting. Put our set screws on these guys. So if I can grab the set screws we have, and I need my screwdriver. It's on the elevator. On the rudder. Bueno. Waiting to see if our flight control, so those are secure. Now that we've done that, let's may as well put this guy in. Yep, that'll be fine. So, run some hot glue along the outside edges. Oh. See if I can avoid falling off the rails. Or putting hot glue on the outside, there we are. I'm just not having the day on that today. Pinch our control rods just to get them out of the way momentarily. Pick up any hot glue. Let's just hold that into position just as such. There we are. 
point there we are. All right. Um, that has closed out the airframe. If these parts, if, let's bring this back up. Um, here we are, I'll stick some. I have our aileron push rods, let's see. Most likely that one was there and most likely this one was here. They're exactly as they appear. Nothing exciting. <clears throat> All righty. Here we are, we're back to screwing on the internet. Diane. Wait a minute. I am suspicious. That servo was turning and the control rod wasn't, the uh, control horn wasn't moving. This one is fine. I'll screw that down better. This one was not. There we go, maybe that's grip better. The uh, servo horn was not engaged. Okay, all of those are good. Just connecting, power's off. Let's put the cowl back in. See where we're at. We're pretty close. I think we're down to mounting the gear. Pull these out. These out. These guys out. Obviously there'll be rigging and everything else, but he's off. Now the gear itself. It prints on the surface like this. This piece that travels aft of the uh, gear legs themselves, that will provide additional support to the fuselage because the center of gravity is behind where the gear is going to mount. The gear will mount just to show you basically below the line of the windscreen. So again, I'll tow these out a touch and I'll put it on and it's gonna sit like that. So this is a process to, to glue this on. So let's do this and let's do it slow. Um, First, I'm positioning the gear. Let's scroll you up a little. I'm positioning the gear as I want it. Basically, this down line here will continue to be the leading edge of my landing gear attachment. I'm gonna put the airplane 
on its back so the gear can rest in that position. Find it stable. Let's look at it a couple of times. Yep. Everything is where I want it. Now, pretend the tip of these pliers is a hot glue gun. I am going to go in the middle and then the four outer posts and let it rest. And then I'll do the two outer posts and let it rest. And then I'll do the four corners and let it rest. I never want to build up so much latent heat in there that uh, it's softening the PLA. So here we go. A little in the center. You know, just a pattern where you widely space this. Well, let's let it rest. For the sake of my no attention span, I'll put the fan on it. I'll uh, put the fan on it. While that's extracting heat out of the center, let's do the side braces. Again, I'm just doing a Z pattern just to get glue in there, but not too much heat. Too much heat and they will bend. Okay. See how we feel. That took heat out nicely, okay. Those are tacky. I'm going to add a little bit more. You know, you'd think I'd remember from last time. While we're doing that, what I can do, run a line of hot glue, trailing edge of the KFM step, do it on both sides. We're gonna give that a minute. Cause I'm gonna tuck that servo wire. You wanna see what I'm talking about? Here you go. This is fascinating, isn't it? Do the same on the other side. You're gonna have to use your imagination for this one. There you are. Perfect. Everybody says, oh, but that's drag. Did I mention this is a bush plane? Okay, let's go back to doing our nose job. That's good. Let me go do the alternating holes that I did not do in this. All right, that should secure the sides. Are there any in the top that I haven't got? Oh yeah. And I think that'll do it for the gear. With the exception of way down here, our tail skid. Stick some glue in there. There we go. I'll let you figure out what direction it goes. All righty. Um, take you up here. Let's give it a feel. Let's get this out of the way.
grand reveal. I love this stupid airplane. Dude, it's just fun. Um, still got a radio up. Yeah. Let's try something. Throttle's idled. We're disarmed. Field trip. Yeah, yeah. There's a something in the way, but whatever. Let's see if you can see that. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, there's too much slope. I don't know. I think you get the point. It's a, it's a fun little airplane. Taxis and does stuff well. Um, that's it. I gotta go back to work. Get some stuff edited. Appreciate your time. We'll see you soon.